Well, that's 22 feet, four inches. Even though we're measuring the floor, we're gonna show you how to put in an exciting new system for ceilings. It's called Ceiling Max. And if you're gonna convert your basement into living space or your garage into living space, or maybe you just got an old ceiling that's really cracked up, something you wanna hide, this is a great system. They even furnish you with a little wheel here to let you figure out exactly how much material you're gonna need. Now our room is 10 by 22 and four inches. So uh, we're gonna have to go to the next level up, which is 10 by 24. Actually, it's a pretty good idea to have some extra material just in case. Now I've transferred all the information to a drawing here so that you can sort of see what we got going here. Now our room is 10 feet by 22 feet, four inches. Since we're dealing with two foot square tiles, that means we're gonna have four inches left over. When we divide that, that just leaves two inches on each side for a border, and that would not look very good. What we can do though is add the four inches to one of these two foot square tiles, that gives us 28 inches. When we divide that by two, we end up with 14 inches on each side, and that's a much better looking border. Now the grid system is composed of four different parts. There are three eight foot long pieces. One of them is the wall bracket, another one is the runner, and there's the hanger. And then there's a two foot long element which is called a T. Now the first step toward building our grid is to put the wall brackets all the way around the perimeter of the room. You probably noticed that one lip of the wall bracket is a little wider and that has an advantage to it because now we can either insert our screws directly into the joist or put them into the wall. And remember, always wear your safety goggles whenever you're gonna be using power tools. You can use drywall screws every 18 to 24 inches. Now with the wall brackets installed all the way around the perimeter of the room, our next step is to put the runners in place. And to be sure we get them in the right place, we need to measure out from the wall over here. What we're gonna do is measure out two feet since we're using two foot square tiles. Then we're gonna add three quarters of an inch and I'll explain why we're doing that in just a minute. We make our mark up here. All right, the next thing we need to do is strike a chalk line. I've already got the chalk line hooked up to a nail over on the other side. All I have to do now is pull the line real tight and then give it a good twang and that ought to take care of us. Now we're gonna provide for our barter strip. At each end of one of these hangers, there's a one foot section. If we had a smaller border strip, we could handle it this way. Since ours is 14 inches, we come down to the next two foot mark, measure back 14 inches, make our mark, use a square so that we can get a good straight cut. And we're gonna make our cut with 10 snips. And the best way I've found to do it is to cut from the back side here, cut straight in from this side go over and cut from this side, then flip the whole thing over and cut through the center. This is gonna take care of our problem with our 14 inch border. Now in order to install our hanger strip, we slip it into the wall bracket and then line it up with the blue line. Remember we added three quarters of an inch when we were getting ready to strike our blue line. The reason being, if we had it at exactly two feet, we wouldn't be able to see the line. Now we got a good shot at putting it right in place and being all lined up. Here's a handy tip that you're gonna love. When you're dealing with an eight foot long piece, sometimes you can't get anybody to help you. So what we did is we cut off a little piece of the runner and we're gonna snap it in place on the end of the new strip, the one we're gonna put up next. Then we snap it into place in the one that we just finished putting up. Now they can slide together and help you to hold the thing up. Now that we have our first row of hangers in place, we can forget about measuring. It's gonna be automatic. This little T is gonna measure for us and when it's snapped in place, it's gonna give us exactly two square feet to put our panels in. Now I've already put this one in place so it'll hold this up for me. And now we'll just go ahead and get this one engaged. We have to move this over. And when it's snapped in place, it's exactly two feet away from the other ones. Now, all we have to do is to get our drill and use a screw to hold it in place. Now we're really on a roll. What we're gonna do is continue to put these T's and the hangers all the way across both ways. We're gonna end up with perfect two foot square openings, plus our barter pieces are gonna be 14 by 24 inches. 
it's going to be a piece of cake. It's time for us to cut our border tiles, and I want to show you a little trick that I think you're going to like. What you're going to do is you're going to use the end of the measuring tape as a sort of a tool to mark and also score a line. You just be sure you hold the other part up here straight against the edge and then go to work. And you can see it's scoring a nice line there that's going to make it easier for us to cut. Now probably the best tool for cutting is going to be a utility knife. Just be sure you have a sharp blade and then follow the scored line all the way down. You're not going to cut through the tile, you're just going to cut into it. When you get down at the bottom you'll be able to just take it and put it across your knee, give it a little spanking and it'll just crack right along the place where you want it to. And that's a nice cut. If there are any rough edges you can just pull them back like this. They'll never be seen. Well now it's time to start installing the ceiling tiles. And I got to tell you this one over in the corner is going to be the most difficult. And to make it a little easier I'm going to remove this T. And that's going to allow us to take the tile and slide it right into place. And it's a good idea if you make sure that the finish side faces down. Once that's in place we'll just put the T back in place and we're ready to move on to the next one. Next we're going to install this entire row of tiles. First thing I need to do though is to rock this T just a little bit. That's going to allow us to put this in place a lot easier. Once we get it in place we rock it back and we're ready for the next one. Now we do just one row at a time so that we can snap the runner in place and give it that finished look. When we get all this done we'll be able to continue doing the same thing until we got the job finished and it's not going to take too long. It's really pretty easy. Now that we're away from the wall you'll be able to see the rocking action that we talked about a little bit earlier. We just slide this in place and then we rock the T and it's that easy. It also is that easy to remove later on if you need to get up there to take care of wiring or plumbing or anything like that. Man oh man what a change. This really looks great and keep in mind that you have lots of choices in colors and also in finishes because any 2x2 two two or 2x4 two tile will work with this system. If you'd like more information for this easy quick installation why don't you contact us on the internet. It's MichaelHolligan.com. Thank mm -hmm. you.